Hey guys, hi, welcome to my video, and this is going to be every single Valroof 2 groove change, tier 2, tier 1, what's changed, what's new, the new commanders, the mice, the fire republic, um, every single detail, important stuff to know, tips, you know, so enjoy. Hey guys, so, first groove, scissors groove, now the way it works is that any units which have moved already in this turn, can move one more time in the same turn if they are above, below, left or the right of Caesar. This is basic, right? Just like in Valkyrie 1. No, no changes just yet. See? Good stuff. Now, um, what happens if Caesar gets his tier 2 groove? I can answer that for you. I mean, that's why you guys are here, I assume. So, do not waste anyone's time. I'm gonna show you. The way it works is that, uh, let me just demonstrate, uh, it has a bigger range now, right, And but it's a bit different, so let me just show you guys, so this is spent, so now we have a few spent units, uh, there's nothing blocking this, the, this way, and we have Inspire. What happens in this case? Now you guys might be thinking, hold on, that golem, or those golems were also in the groove range, see? But why did it not work with them, only with the archers? Is there like a limit of only 4 units being able to be uh, enhanced by the level 2 groove of Caesar? Question mark? The answer is not at all, my friends. The thing is, golems are just way too strong, so they are simply an exception from the groove. Any unit in the range, with no limit, can be enhanced by the groove. So now mages can go 7 times, which is absolutely insane, I must say. I have no words besides insane. Of course the golem, no changes, right? Now, not just that, besides being able to move, you know, uh, faster in the turn, that's not just it, of course. It also works just like Caesar's original groove. So, not only do they boost the units, it's not, you don't just boost the units, the units can once again move with the boost again in the same turn. So, let's see my archers here. One, two, three, shoot. And then groove. Now I can go like five. One, two, three, four, five. I don't know why I would, but. And shoot again. <laughs> so, now what are the limits, you might be asking? Well, the limits. You can see for yourself. Obviously, it doesn't work with dragons and golems, but it also doesn't work with uh, flying units, it would seem. Including transparent balloons. No effect on balloons, no effect on uh, wagons, trebuchets, ballista, even knights. They have no effect. See? Only these smaller units, but that includes the rifleman, which is quite strong, and the flying thing. The Flamingo thing, I have to learn the name of that. Uh, yeah, so that's how it works, guys. Okay, okay, second one. Second commander we're gonna look at is Mercia. Very classic Mercia. So, she's the healer, right? 100% groove. Uh, yeah, that's basically 100%. Um, so, what happens when we have an army but it's weak as hell? We have archers, but it's, they're all 10 HP. No, the crits only did like five damage, like terrible. Oh, but we have groove. None shall and fall while I still stand. What happens after groove? Healing aura. Well, every single unit gets healed back, including Mercia herself, by fifty percent. Always fifty percent, guys. Even if it's a dragon or a giant or a dog, it doesn't matter, guys. Including air units. As you can see with the balloons, it's always 50%. That's her tier 1 groove. Now let's check out her tier 2 groove. Now behold Mercia's tier 2 groove. Now you, now you can see that she has some lightning going on. And you can see in the bottom corner, she has 200% groove. Now, all the units are again once, once again 10% HP, except this guy. He's 1%, just to show you the exact numbers. And the range of the groove is exactly the same. However... I'm here to help! What's not the same is the healing. Look at that, my dear friends. 
completely, almost completely healed. So instead of 50%, it now heals 35% more, which means 85% healing, guys. All the 10% units are now 95%, while the 1% is 86%, which proves it's 85% healing, guys. Now, I did say 85%, but that's not the whole truth, guys. So, everyone in the aura gets healed 75%, actually. But... For, um, let me give, give you guys a situation, an example. Oh no, all my dragons were, were um, hexed for 10%. Oh no, what shall I do? I want to go up there and heal them. And there's also like a huge fight up here. Damn. I would... Should I stay here and go there? I'm gonna stay here because I want to heal this front. It's more important. There's more units here, guys. We are surrounded by wagons, so we have to hold this front. Um, so essentially, I have to usually choose, right? But with her tier 2 groove... None shall fall while I still stand! Healing Aura! Whoop! All of the dragons are not healthy. All units up here are 10% healthier. My units, not the enemy units. So now Mercy has like an omnipotent groove all over the map. She can reach any unit regardless of range, just like the old Vesper groove. Uh, every single friendly unit gets healed 10%. Not the structures, only the units by 10%. Doesn't work on your HQ though. <laughs> Unfortunately. Okay, next one, Emmerich. Then we'll have one more Cherry Stone Commander. So, Emmerich, 1% groove, normal level 1 groove. All of these units are in range of these guys. Oh no, they can hurt my army, that's not good. So what happens is I put down a shield. Now it says that the range is that, but something interesting is if you actually put it down, the range is actually smaller, guys. It's only this size, okay? It's two by two, essentially, more or less. So what happens is uh, instead of like in Valru 1 where it gains plus three defense, now the crystal only gains only gives the terrain plus two defense. So now mages or roads can no longer crit enemies. See guys? They get plus two defense, so it's like they are standing on a flagstone right now, even though this is a road. This is a road, guys. I just changed the biome to jungle. Um, so yeah, this is how it works now. And ah! put on the Elder Shield. And now I changed these roads to planes. So now they are three defense. And now I can crit with mages. See? Because mages need plus three defense to crit. So, generally, that's only forests, right? But for the crystal, that changes. Uh, road, plus two. Uh, I mean, yeah, two defense. Planes, three defense. You guys get it? So, whatever the, the uh, tile y the unit is standing on um, has the defense, plus two is added to it, right? So, this is the same thing as World War 1, except it's only plus two, not plus three defense. Make sense? Especially good for mages, which is why I put some mages here for mage crits. Now let's check out his level, uh, his tier two groove. Now we have tier two emerald groove, right? So what happens? This should protect us. Now the range is actually what he shows, right? So that range is not for tier one; it's tier two. And one more change, guys. Besides it having a larger range, do you notice the defense? Even though this is a uh, row tile. I can now crit with mages, which is wonderful. Because now, just like in Vogue Group 1, it gives plus 3 defense, not plus 2, guys. Just like the, I mean, like the tier 1, it gives plus 3 again. See? So now, roads is 3 defense, planes is 4 defense, etc. And, of course, beaches, which is minus 2 defense, now become 1 defense. And, I mean, minus 1 becomes... 2 defense and rivers, which are minus 2 defense, become 1 defense because plus 3 defense, right? <sighs> Dear old Mercy War, the community favorite, the most OP of commanders. Now, his tier 1 groove, 100%, right? Gone fishing, it works in any water stuff, which means beaches, oceans, rivers, you name it, you can do it. I'm not sure if, it, if the tile affects the quality of the catch. But it's the same thing. You go ahead and you go Very fishing. Well, then. <laughs> yep, that's literally it, guys. <laughs> no changes from our group one. However, the tier two groove. Oh ho 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 ho. So this is the best part. Dear old Merciful has not been forgotten by Chocolate Fish. He does indeed have a different groove now. 
he steered to groove instead of gone fishing is now these are mountain tires guys is now bird watching very well then same sound effect Ha <laughs> but now you can find birds guys instead of fish so hey i love that they kept mercy with a peaceful commander a peaceful ruler fits his reign Alright guys, time for Felheim commanders. So, first and foremost, now we have Walder. His tier 1 groove, just like before, is raised on the end. You can go anywhere and anywhere you go. Four ties around you. One of them only, not all four. You My can choose to raise a skeleton, which is just a normal Felheim swordsman. And the skeleton is immediately active, which means it can move uh, anywhere. So, it can go here, it can do anything guys. It can. It, it's just a swordsman, right? Which uses spawn in the middle of the map. Now, Walder's tier 2 groove. It shows where the skeletons could go. How And as you guys heard me say, skeletons. Yep, not just one skeleton, guys. And if I go now, I can raise not one, but two skeletons in any direction I choose. By my hand, rise! Hey guys, so this is the same exact thing. For movement, not a skeleton, except now it's two of them, right? Isn't that awesome? And you guys would be wrong if you think that's it. You see, these skeletons deal more damage. Now, to be more specific about Walder's groove, it's not like he, the two swordsmen that he spawns are OP or something. They're not special swordsmen. Uh uh. The special ability, actually, By my is hand that besides rise. spawning two swordsmen, all swordsmen this turn, all of Walder's swordsmen this turn deal. Double damage, look at that guys, one hit, an archer on planes without crit, look at that, 14% on the golem, still gets suicided though because the golems are very tough, deal 6-7 uh, on the wagon, 59 on the trebuchet, uh, just can wreck everything, very very strong swordsman guys, for a whole turn, so, very very powerful groove, wow. Okay guys, now we have Ragna. We all love Ragna, don't we? So, her groove has been a bit too powerful in World Group 1, right? So she was always banned. Uh, it's essentially the same here, except the range is now much smaller. It's uh, just like Tivolta's groove. It's just above, below, left or right of her. And uh, the range is about the same. You can move 4 and then it's 3 range from there. So the groove range is 3, guys. You can go three away from where you cast the groove. Now, um, besides just causing damage, so let's say we go here and we want to jump. So we go here and we want to jump here. Can you guys see the little arrow on the wagon? That means that the groove now actually, the, the tier 1 groove, actually uh, pushes back the enemies, any enemy, by one tile and causing 50% of her commander damage. She would deal 67% to the wagon by just hitting it, see? And with the groove... I'M GONNA BREAK YOU! She deals 33% damage and pushes it back by a tile. Very useful. Let me give you guys an even better demonstration. So, we go here, we're gonna jump. I'm In between four enemies. Yep. Yeah. BAM! They all get pushed back and you get 50% of the damage. It's amazing, honestly, I must say. Now what happens if they can be pushed back? What happens if they can be pushed on the tile which they would be pushed to because there's something blocking it like a wall or a village or, or a different unit? What happens then? Break you! The same thing, except instead of just being pushed back because they can't be they get extra damage, so they get that much more damage, including the thing, if it can be damaged, will also be taking some damage. So if there's some enemy units here, uh, and like here and here and here, they would get damaged also. So in that sense, it would be like Ragnar's old groove, in a larger radius, anything gets damaged. But yeah, that's how it works now. Let's check out her second tier groove, yeah. So, Ragnar's tier 2 groove, huh? Well, uh, I'm glad you asked. First of all, we have a humongous range, not three range like Ragnar's previous groove. Should be one, two, three. Nope, 
Now the range is actually uh, three, four, five, six. It's six range. So not, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's six range. Um, beside the range being bigger, Groove now deals a hundred percent commander damage. So she, if she was gonna individually hit all of these guys. With her fists, why she was full HP, she would have dealt this much damage, which is a uh, 59 to a knight on a plane style. And she also pushed them back two ties, guys. See that? Now, what happens if you block the way or if she has lower HP? Now she's only 55 HP. I'm gonna break it! Does that affect the groove damage? Ha! It does not, guys. So even if your Ragnar is 1 HP, and you have Groove, it will deal the same exact amount of damage at all times. So this is extremely wonderful. But of course, with 1 HP, you might not, might not want to jump into the middle of your enemy's armies. You know, it depends on the situation though. Now let's say that the units you would push back or blocked just like before. What happens now? Yep, just like with the first Groove. The thing is that you push the units against get damaged, if they can be damaged, and they take more damage than before. So in this case, it's 28% uh, more damage, I think, or like, something like that. So yeah, very, very interesting. This changes like unit by unit, I assume. So we have to play around with that to know the exact specifics. Next one. Alright guys, so we have a uh, Sigrid now. We all know a Sigrid is pretty cool. She is a pretty weak usually. But she can one hit units and heal herself back in the process, so that is still the same here in World of 2. She can one hit any unit, including a uh, dragon. So, yeah, it's not just ground units, right? It's also uh, water units if she can reach, it's also air units, dragons. She can one hit anything in this game, right? Now, I think the group doesn't work on a few things like Emerald's Crystal, uh, Grief Vines, but you know, anything just like a unit. So, Let's just see it on this uh, poor octopus. Fall before me! We're all healed up. But we're already full HP. Let's say we are like 1 HP or like 6 HP because of healing. And we take down a full health unit. What happens? Yep, fully healed, guys. So you essentially absorb the unit's health, right? Any unit's health. Doesn't matter what kind of unit, the health is all the same. And the health is all that matters. For example, let's say we're gonna eat this 1% dragon. So hungry! Now we're 1% healed. So you guys, now we are 7% instead of 6%. So you just absorb the HP of the unit. So be careful, uh, I would never use this groove on units which are not full HP, you know? What happens if uh, Sigrid charges her groove, her wonderful sexy groove, to 200%? She was always a weakling, generally, in War of... Will this change it? Now, with 200% it's exactly the same, it's a Vampiric Touch. No changes there, you can't do it with multiple units or anything like that. The change, right? It's still the same, but you heal the HP. So if I do with the 1 HP Dragon, I only get 1 HP back. If the full HP, I get the full HP back. So that's the exact same. The only difference, guys, let me just show you. If I go ahead and went here, it wouldn't really be safe next turn, right? Because uh, <laughs> I'm in the range of a few dangerous things, right? But with with um, with her tier 2 vampiric touch, this move is safe. Why, you ask? So hungry! <laughs> you see that? You see this strange thing around her? What is that? Well, no, it's our turn. What? Wait, what? Oh boy. Yep, that's right. Sirid's tier 2 groove makes her invulnerable for one turn. Right? So, for this turn, nothing can damage it. Until it's her turn once again. Let's just wait for the AI. And now it's her turn again. And now it's over. But she's full HP. So, after grooving, she becomes invulnerable to anything, and I'm gonna test if that also goes for stuff like witch hexes. 
Okay, we have this strong, powerful, invulnerable Sigrid. Nothing can damage it, right? What about a Ragnar group and a Witch Hex? Let's test the Witch Hex first, guys. Let's do a Witch Hex. Yep. Unfortunately, she is not completely invulnerable, guys. A Witch Hex will hit through her Vampiric Shield. What about Ragnar's groove? Huh? I'm gonna break you! Nope, the grooves do not affect her, only the witch hexes. So witches are very powerful, they can hex right through reality, but the groove will not affect her, so be careful about witches, but the rest you don't really have to worry about for one turn. Now for the Heaven Song faction, so first of all let's take a look at Koji. We know that he has the Sparrow Bombs, right? That's his average tier 1. No changes here guys, she still, I mean he still yeah. has the Sparrow Bombs. Which attack, uh, I mean, um, damage any enemy units, doesn't work on friendly units, fortunately. In a one by one by one, you know, top, bottom, left and right, just like many other groups. Uh, of course, it only works on three enemies at the same time, because it also needs to, you know, go over an enemy, if it was like four. So it can only damage three units in one explosion, it's something to keep in mind, that's the limit. The physical limits of this bomb. Let's try it, so... It's around half the damage of the commander, right? So two of these include uh, equals the full hit of a full health Koji. Even if he's like 1 HP, the bombs, just like with Ragnar's Groove, deal the same amount at all times, okay? It also works on air units, so it's not just a ground one trick. Now what if he has a... You know the second tier of the groove. Also, you can uh, also you can block with the bombs, so it can only be attacked by range units and you know mage units and stuff. Now Koji's second tier groove. You guys see that I'm low HP. I'm 10 HP, and that's for a reason. First of all, the bombs. It's still only two bombs, okay? So I thought it's like something like three bombs or four bombs, which would be OP, but nope. It's two super bombs, so they have the same speed. However. When they detonate, instead of just uh, damaging the units, they uh, for 50% commander damage, they now damage the units for 75% commander damage, and also push them back. And of course, if they can be pushed back, they take extra damage, which means that Swordsman is very dead. Now, that's not the only thing, guys. Okay, besides the bomb is now exploding for 75% damage. Let's say it's not the enemy turn and they try to kill the bomb. The bombs are very easy to kill, washed with the archer, the mage, it's all very easy. Um, however, there is something you should know. First of all, they have more defense, but if they get destroyed and the bomb explodes next to an ally, such as Koji, what happens? That's right, Koji's HP actually gets healed up. Which is extremely surprising, I never thought this would be anything that a bomb could do, because this opens up so many possibilities, so many funky plays in Valgroove tournament matches, you know. Something we have to test real fast is, of course, let's put them in terrain, and as I suspected, that will give them defense, right? Or at least it should, however, since it's an air unit, just so you guys know, um, the terrain does not actually give them any defense, right? In case you're wondering for 2v2s, uh, every crystals do affect the defense, even though they're air units, just like with dragons. So, even a archer crit won't take them out, 99% guys. Ballista will do 74, uh, normal archer crit will do 74 as well, so same damage matrix. So yeah, these bombs are quite tanky with an American crystal, yeah? If we, uh, of course, blow it up next to allies, next to the allies of the bomb, yep, it's not just Koji, guys, it's anyone that gets healed. And the healing is by exactly 35%, so it's always 35%, guys, always 35% healing to any units nearby, which it explodes nearby if you as the enemy, shoot it. Now, if Koji himself is the one to detonate these bombs, you know, or, or the player who owns the bombs is the one who is gonna detonate the bombs, and it's not the enemy who's shooting them, they don't have this effect. Detonate, bam, 
in fact, it pushes away allies as well. It doesn't heal if that's what happens, only if they get shot, and it pushes away allies. But of course, if it gets shot, it does not push away allies. Only so detonation and destruction by a projectile or an enemy mage is now two different things. Okay, guys, very interesting. In case you're wondering, even if it's a damaged bomb, right? Even if it's like a damaged bomb that gets killed off by a projectile of the enemy, will that heal the same amount? Let's see, this is all 50% health units. A golem, a rifleman, and a swordsman. So we kill it, and... Yep, still 35%. So the HP of the bomb doesn't matter, guys. Don't you worry. Let's go. See? In case you're wondering, nope, the same does not apply to the tier 1 groove. So, if an enemy uh, detonates that, it will not, in fact, it will not damage you, and it won't push you back, because that's only the tier 2's property, but if it gets, you know, like, destroyed, nope, no healing, guys, only for the tier 2 bombs. Alright, time for Terry. Okie dokie, so now we have Terry the Empress, and what happens with her groove, tier 1 groove, is a rising wind, same as before guys, no changes there. So, uh, the range is 5 ties, okay, so, if I go here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this one I can still reach. So, uh, see guys, I can reach this one, if I go, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, here, I can't re one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yeah, so it's 5 from me, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I can reach it, if I go here, I can't reach it, because that's 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, if I can come here, then I can't reach that either, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it's a 5 tile effective range, guys, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, so it's in any direction, up, down, left, or right, or vertical, doesn't matter, it's 5 tiles. And you can displace a unit in in the same 5 tile range. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. However, only where based off where you're standing. So from you, Terry, being the middle, from her, above 5, left 5, right 5, and below 5, the unit which you have grabbed can be put anywhere, of course, if, if there's no range. And if the unit can be put on that tile, so like you can't put a trebuchet on a mountain, right? Or in water. But you can put it like, I don't know, like there. The yeah, makes sense. The interesting thing is, of course, with uh, her groove, Terry's groove, doesn't, it doesn't just work on uh, enemies, right? It works her on, on her own units as well, so... This knight is just out of reach for a knight crit on this golem, which is not good. We have to fix that, so we're gonna put it just a tile above, just one tile above. Rises. So that in this same turn, we can still move, and now we can do a knight crit. So her groove is extremely useful for specific positioning, or just sniping powerful and expensive enemy units. It's up to you and your imagination of what you're gonna use that power for. I just show you. So guys, for her tier 2 groove, of course I had to increase the size a bit because it's very strong. So, the difference now is we don't have a 5 range. The groove doesn't have 5 range from where we are standing right now. It actually has 8 range. Yep. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, if I'm standing right here, I can still grab this top left or top right uh, ballist, uh, I mean, uh, trebuchet and wagon, respectively. But if I go one tile below, I can't, because it's only 8 tiles, guys, and, that, and they are 9 tiles away. So now the range is 8 tiles, guys, and, but it works exactly the same, except, besides the much bigger range, she's an extreme threat now, the unit which you move, also 8 range, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, her being the epicenter of course, so top, bottom, left, right, and vertical. Now, something else, moving any unit, let's say I want to move this knight over here, what happens, or like over here, what happens is, it's like a bomb, 
like a quasi bomb, tier two quasi bomb. It actually pushes away units, just like that. See that for about 50% commander damage, which is very interesting. And then the unit can still attack and wreak havoc. So insanely powerful, huge range, massive threat. Even even has damage threat beside the units that's being moved. So wow. Well done, Chucklefish, you made Terra even more broken. Oh, boys and girls and any other configurations of being. Ryota. The Sand Human, the Ryota. Now, he has been a uh, prime suspect in the uh, in the crime of being OP against the Ar Iranian creatures. And uh, he, as such, he was banned from every single tournament ever since 2.0 update, Double Trouble of Wagroov came out, Wagroov 1. Now, his groove now, I'm not sure if I should say nerfed, I'd say it's different. It's certainly nerfed in pure power aspect, but it's different. It It is more powerful now in a few aspects. So, raw damage wise, it's weaker, but threat wise, it's actually stronger. Let me show you guys. So, generally, Ryota could only groove next to units, right? On, like, structures, vines, stuff like that. In a pattern like this, right? So, I would go here, then here, then here, then here, then here, then here, and then here. And dash through in a formation like that, okay? That's how you could dash. Like, all over the map, there's no limit. And each dash you would do... This, this, is, an, this is his previous groove in one groove one. The damage that you deal to the units in between... Of course, only enemy enemy units, so I wouldn't damage my own units. Is increased by five percent each dash, so five percent, ten percent, fifteen percent, twenty percent, twenty-five, thirty, etc. And that's indefinite, more or less. And uh, what happens now in World of Two is you don't need to be next to anything to dash. You can dash like in the middle of nowhere if you wanted, and you absolutely can. And now the range is one, two, three, four, five, which means I could still just go here. Like over here, I could do that. So let's do that. And now I could like move like this. So let's go here. You'll never see me coming. <laughs> Even though there's no units here, I could still dash through the air. But let's say, let, let's say I'm gonna do something like uh, I'm gonna stand in the middle of nowhere. I'm just gonna dash down here. You are already dead. <laughs> I can. It's like teleportation. So, this you can now be used for movement as well. And keep in mind, this is only tier 1 groove, guys. And, of course, it also works through water units. So, see? Now I can dash once and twice. So, it's limited to two dashes in one turn. You are already dead. But, those two dashes can be mm, very different in movement, depending on what's next to you. And what you're gonna dash through, and where you're gonna arrive, etc. But, it will deal commander damage. Uh... Let's check the exact commander damage that the group is gonna deal. It's gonna be 25% group damage, okay? Now let's check out his tier 2 groove, yeah? Oh, I'm a bit scared because it's a Ryota after all. Now, tier 2 Ryota groove. Huh. Of course, tier 1 could dash 5 ties away, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down here. Tier 2 can do 10 ties away, guys. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. What? There's no space, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 in any direction. But not vertically. Only top, bottom, left or right. Uh, beside that, it's now 50% commander damage. You know, 50%, not 25% like the tier 1. And it's now more dashes, so now it's 3 dashes, not 2. Coming. 1, 2, 3. Even though there's nothing there, I can do that if I choose to. Let's do something else. That's not it, guys. There's lots of changes. So now it's three dashes, guys. Much bigger range. So ten tiles, not five tiles. And more damage. And one more thing. The enemy units, right? The enemy units that, that, that you dash through actually lose movement. You are already dead. Fortunately, it doesn't affect your own units. Otherwise, this sword could not move properly now. But you see that? That little uh, arrow going backwards. That means that this wagon now has less movement. So, this weapon has 12 movement, you know, 1, 2, uh, e each each plane's tile is 2 tiles, and this guy has now less movement, so 1 whole tile less movement, which means 2 movement less. So, 1, 2, 3, 
four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. But this one, the one we dashed through, now has one, two, three, four, five. So let's get that's under turn. The normal wagon can go one, two, three, four, five, six. Hey, I'm happy. But the damaged one, one, two, three, four, five. Only five tires, guys. One movement lost thanks to Riotas group and this is for any unit so any amount of units that's the enemy unit so let me, let, let me, let me just say uh, Already now dead. all of these naval units and this trebuchet all have the same debuff until it's my turn again so it's any unit that you dash through they get the debuff there's no scaling of the damage now it's always 50% commander damage and it's 10 times, so Ryota is still pretty damn powerful, I must say. Alright guys, it's time for the Outlaws. Now, Wolfar, aka Captain Moneybags, has the same groove, right? T off. And of course, that works on it, his own units for 8 tiles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Vertically, horizontally, it's 8 tiles, okay? So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This would reach in the gate. If if you just do this with like um like this birdie, same thing that way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then wherever it lands, it will deal damage. Off what you. kind of damage? <laughs> well uh, unfortunately this damage to your own unit as well. And it's going to be 50% commander damage. By the way, Capture Moneybags and Wolf are uh, two separate entities in the uh, ed editor, which means you can choose which look you prefer. Let's go with the Northern Wolf for now. And of course, as we said before, the damage, including to the uh, to the unit that you tee off, including your own unit, 50% damage, yeah? Now, this works with any unit, including air units. Such as the dragon, which is amazing. You also have uh, water in it, so like if you take an uh, octopus onto the land, of course it can survive. Which means it dies. Insta kill. Bam. Now something even more interesting, just like in Mogru 1, of course, if you put a uh, T off a, a unit to a tile it's not supposed to be, such as a dragon to a flagstone, insta kill just like before with the octopus, you know, same exact effect. But of course, be careful, it works with your own units as well. If you tee off a, uh, a giant onto a mountain, you insta kill your own unit. So be very careful. Of course, it's still this damage around it. But uh, that's not very much worth it now, is it, guys? Um, let's try something else for a change. Let's try to tee off this guy here. This damage, of course, to any nearby stuff. 50%, which is like 25% damage on a dragon, even though commanders can't really deal damage to dragons, but that's the matrix. Yeah, it's straightforward, same thing, just like in Mogul 1, basically no changes, except that it also damages your unit. Now, what about the tier 2 group of Wolfar? Well, as you guys can see, it's powerful enough that I had to increase the size of the map. Now, it's not 8 tiles, which, as if that would have not been enough, you know, and it's 12 tiles, yep. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. In the same pattern as before. Absolutely insane, guys, absolutely insane. However, there's a limit. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 tiles diagonally, okay? So after 9 tiles, the rest of the tiles, 3 tiles, go north, so above. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So not 10, 11, 12, which would be all the way here. It's actually, uh, I mean, it would be all the way here. It's actually above. 1, 2, 3. Yeah, you guys know it. I just need to be very thorough because this is a full tutorial. Now, um, besides that, it still deals the same damage, 50%, to the unit upon the landing and nearby. But now it can bounce multiple times. So like, let's say I will bounce it here and, and then from here one more time here. So it's three bounces. One, two, three. See that? And it deals 50% each time, guys. So that's going to be 54% because it deals 108%. A full hell commander to swordsman on a on a plane style. 
very very interesting I must say. Let's test it with some terrain differences. One, two, three. Yep guys, terrain does indeed affect it, so forest, of course they take less damage, mountain even less damage, 6% difference, so yeah, keep that in mind guys, the terrain does affect both the unit that it lands on, um, that the tile that it lands the unit on, and the units which is actually gonna damage, right, so it's very very important, of course once again you can deal, or like you can tee off any unit, your own enemy unit, anything you want. It can just now bounce multiple times. But do mind that the only the first bounce, the first initial landing, hits the unit which you were um, teeing off. The second and the third bounce do not deal any damage to the teed off unit. See so guys, it only got damaged one time. So that's very important to know and to note. Alright, time for Nadia. Now, Nadia, the Firebird, she deals 50%, 50, just like uh, Wolfer's Groove and Ragnar's Groove, 50% commander damage to up to three enemies nearby. You've got me all fired up! <laughs> and this seems to be random, so now these guys were damaged, see that? Let's try again. Turning up the heat! <laughs> Now it was these guys that got damaged. I'll show you why they call me Firebird. <laughs> I'm all fired up. <laughs> yep, and now it's these units, so it's always something different, guys. If it's more than three units in her range, it, it's kind of randomized, which is uh, very strange. It's like RNG in a groove, right? Mm, but it's yeah, it's up to three enemy units. Your friendly units can never be damaged, so don't worry about using the groove. They will never be hurt by Nadia. Only three randomly selected enemy units for 50% of a full head commander damage. Now, what happens when we get the tier 2 groove, huh? So, Nadia tier 2 groove. Now, the difference is that now, instead of up to three units, it's up to five units, guys. The range is the same. Up to five units in her range get... But this time, not 50% commander damage, but 75% commander damage. Alright, up to 5 enemy units randomly in her range. Turning up the heat. <laughs> um, there we go. Isn't that interesting? And there is something else you guys can notice. They are burning. Oh no. Yep. This is an effect that was applied to them. Until an ally uses Daos. Like this, you know, they, they don't need to hold water or anything, they can just douse. They will keep burning, right? So, douse this, and this can douse that. Even Vergons can douse, then this can douse, then maybe this can douse this. Even Trubishes can douse, so any unit, any unit can douse. Doesn't matter if they have no hands or water. And if they don't douse, then let me show you guys what happens if they just keep on burning. So let me just show you guys what happens if they don't get doused. They get ignored by their own units. What happens then? Well, well, bad stuff for them. For Nadia is great. So let me show you guys. Now it's Nadia's turn again. And... Oops! They were not doused, so now they take... 10% damage, yep, and this is not gonna end until you spend a unit's turn to douse, which means this grew essentially forces the enemy to spend units and waste units turns to douse, because that counts as an action, very very annoying to deal with guys, because if you don't, then 10% damage each turn. You know, very very interesting groove. I'm not sure what tier she will be, but we're gonna find out together, guys. You and I, okay? Let's go. Next one, time for Vesper. All right, guys, Vesper. Now she was pretty strong. Not all people very strong because she had infinite range of her groove, right? Well, not anymore. Now her groove is limited. Smoke, uh, smoke shroud. It's called. The groove is called. Is limited to six styles now. So you know, top, bottom, left, right, diagonal. One, two, three, four, five, six. With her being the epicenter, so sh six styles, guys. You can put it anywhere you want in these six styles, but it will can only be six styles. So let's say you go here, then it's here. Let's say you go here, then it's here. Understand? 
Let's use it. Of course, it protects the units inside. They can't attack from. I mean, uh, they can attack from inside, but they can't be attacked back. Anything inside can't be attacked though. So haha, we can harass you guys, but they can't. You can't get me. And the harpy chicken is like, ah, we are so angry. Let's let's attack these annoying archers. What? We cannot do that. Yep, the smoke shroud makes it so they are invulnerable for one turn. They can't attack. Tier 2 version of Vesper Group. It's the same thing except the range is now bigger. Twice as big in fact. Look at that humongous range guys. 12 range. Just like the tier 2 Wolf or T off. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. In any direction you want to go at. Doesn't matter. I got it here. I can go here and it's from here. Here and it's from here. Same thing as before. But beside being, you know, larger, larger uh, range, of course the ra the size of the shroud is the same. I cast we also spawn two shadow sisters. Oh ho ho. See, uh, see that, guys? And these guys work like commanders, essentially, right? So they are very squishy. They get one shot by anything. But if they get the first hit on you, it's like a commander. So now, essentially, we have three commanders, which is quite strong. And we can deal three commander damage if we are the first ones to hit. Which, using the shroud, we will be. Unless the enemy retreats, of course. Which is very, very interesting. We can attack it. Oh, no. We could be able to attack this, but no, we can because we can. they can be targeted. Yeah, so let's see what these Shadow Sisters can do, guys. Let me just show you guys the pure power of the Shadow Sisters. Also, there's some strange mechanics of how they can be spawned. I'm going to show you guys too. Show you guys that too. So, Shadow Sisters, groove is now over. Now they can attack and it's just like a commander, see? Boom, one shot. Boom, 67% on the wagon. Crazy powerful. But of course they get destroyed easily. So, Harpy, 95%. They actually don't get one shot in this case, but they are very squishy. So they would get destroyed by anything. So even if they don't get one shot, they become effectively useless. So, but it's a very interesting mechanic that they, sometimes they, they leave. So a hex might be useful. Now let's see something else about Vesper. What happens if there's no space within the range? There's no space for the Shadow Sisters, guys. Like we put this guy here, no space, right? Inside the I cast range of the Shroud. Yeah, so what happens if, if that's the case? You don't get the Shadow Sisters, guys, so be very careful. There's no Shadow Sisters, there's no, it's not like they spawn outside. You just don't get them, period. You just don't get them, which is terrible. So be very, very careful. 20% groove, as you guys can see. Uh, if, there, if there's a space, if there's one space... Smoke and shadows! Then you get at least one of them, right? They can move in the same turn though. But uh, you get two of them, so make sure you have at least two spaces, otherwise you're wasting the full potential of your groove. Unless the situation makes that version better. Anyways. Time for the next faction, yeah? Okay, now my favorite part, guys, the Florin. Ah, I wonder, I wonder what they changed of my beauties. So, we're going to be doing a teleport beam. Um, of course, the tier 1 uh, groove is unlike in Vogue 2, where they nerfed Nuru so that um, every unit costs double. Which means, for a golem, you'd have to pay 2,400 gold. Crazy, huh? Well, no longer the case. It's once again normal price for everything. 400 for a shaman. A quagmat is the same price, just like in barracks, right? So let's get like a mage. Calling reinforcements. And of course, it can move immediately. So, it's just like 1.3 Nura, essentially. But she is a slow charge. So, tier 2. Now, tier 1 is, uh, you know, nothing special. Nothing changed. It's just pretty basic. Tier 2. Oh my god, guys, this group is, is, is like the economical, the economical players, like living dream come true. If you love to play econ uh, economy, Nuru is going to be your commander. You know why? Well, first of all, with a tier 2 charge groove, Nuru groove, you know what happens? Well, I'm gonna show you what happens, that's why I'm here, right? Free units. That's right, guys. All these units. Are free, but there is something you notice. You cannot buy golems, you cannot buy knights, so it's just the weaker units you could buy, right? So, no dragons and stuff like that. But 
even these are useful, you know, like an archer is very strong. You can buy a gunner, a, you know, rifleman, which which is very powerful. For free, right? So 650 gold value for free for this groove alone. But that's not everything, guys. Let me show you guys. The price is here. 400, 600, normal price, right? Well, just wait a second. Before you recruit anything, guys, you should use your groove, right? You know why? Well, this is what happens. Reinforcements! Grooved and now look at that guys see those little flags that indicates that now we have a 25% discount for both barracks any barracks on the map not from the castle not from the pub I mean the hub I mean the port I'm sorry not from the teams then only from barracks number no barracks 25% discount so gloom giant is now 300 gold less the is now 825 knight is 450 Swordsman is only 75 gold. Quagmat is 113, which is gonna change the gold uh, values to uneven odd numbers, which is strange, but it's no problem. Something you have to calculate with. So everything from here, including the big units, including Gloom Giants, Gloom Giants, 25% discount, guys. Hey, I can buy two Giants for only 1800 gold instead of 2400. Very great for those economy players. Alright, next one. Ah, green fingers are one. So, the groove isn't very different from World Group 1. You can spawn down 5 vines in a 5 by 5 radius. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So let's say I put one here, one here, one here, one here, and one there. Nature will claim you. Which is very useful. But there is a bit of a difference. They take more damage now. So let's say um, 81, 81 from a trebuchet, uh, 76 from a swordsman, which means three swords can now destroy a wine on on planes. So yeah, 76 percent. Yeah. These are technically units, right? And that means that they do happen to benefit from terrain bonuses, right? Which is not good for those who fight against Greenfinger because it's gonna be very annoying to take care of mountain vines. 24% guys, not too good, is it? And it doesn't want hit by a trebuchet crit, right? If it's in a forest. So, be very careful with that, guys. Now, Greenfinger tier 2 groove. Very, very interesting, I must say. So, why it's interesting, you might ask? Well, it's interesting because uh, now the range is bigger, so now it's not a 5 tire radius, but an 8 tire radius. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Any direction you want to go. And that's not all, guys. It's not just the range. Let me just show you guys what happens if I put one here, one here, and the rest just here. A smiley, yeah? Nature's cry! Oh, mm, poor guys got damaged. Well, of course, as you guys can see, it, the terrain once again does protect the units from the damage, but it's 25% commander damage, 25% full health commander damage against the unit. If it's spawned next to it, they are now spiky vines, uh, but they, they have missing things, so they, this is gonna be fixed soon, don't worry. This is actually called spiny or spiky vines. So if, if they get spawned down next to units, any units, it could be like all around and it will damage all of them for 25% commander damage. Um, then, yeah, this is what happens and that's not all. This damage isn't just when spawning down the vines, but, the dam but they also deal damage. And of course the video 20% HP each turn, that's not different. But when you reposition them, they deal damage once again. Bam, see that? So we can do this. Bam! A uh, lot of damage, guys. One here, one here, tons of damage, and one here. Doesn't work on friendly units, so don't worry, guys. It won't damage your your own stuff by accident. So yeah, now Greyfinger's tier two groove isn't just defensive; it's also offensive damage dealing. All right, time for <laughs> Sedge. Now Sedge, as we know, in Valorant, one, Sedge deals thirty five percent damage to a unit. Uh, and if it's below that health, then it can move away again and, you know, do it indefinitely and kill everything. But in War Roof 2, unfortunately, it seems Sedge has been nerfed and now he only has 25% damage what? for his tier 1 groove. So, 
There we go. Now we can move again because that's 25 HP. Next we need 25%. What's your step? Can move again. But this one is also 25%. Ooh, nice, nice. Even though it's a mage, it's stronger. Doesn't matter. It's only the HP that matters. This one's a wagon. This wagon is 35% health. Ooh, let's eat it then. 35? Oh, we can't! The groove now deals 25% damage, guys. <laughs> but we're not, guys. We have a tier 2 groove now with Sedge. And what happens is... Uh, now it's 35%. Just like before. But there's a different change too. I'm gonna show you guys very soon. Sedge hungers! <laughs> What's your step? 35% Go! Now we can kill it There you go guys Another one What's your step? <laughs> Time to run! On the grand finale. So guys, that would be like the average Sedge chain, right? But in War of 2, with the tier 2 group, is different. Let me show you guys what I mean. Now, I could, you know, just kill these one by one, right? But I don't have to, I can just stay where I am. What's your step? Bam! Look at that, guys. Incredibly scary. Three ranged Sash Groove. Nobody is safe once we shall have this in a tournament match. I'm gonna make sure. It's a run. So there you go. I don't have to move a single tile. I can if I want to, but I don't, I don't, I don't. Now the effective range of Sedge, groove by groove, is not four tiles, guys, but seven tiles. That's right. Basically a witch. No one's safe. I can reach that mage, no problem. What's your step? <laughs> However, you need to remember that I can't reach that golem because I calculated from here, not from where I am. So essentially, it's only the first one uh, which you can reach without any with uh, with uh, seven tiles. But the rest you still need four tiles because otherwise it can't be chained properly. But essentially, Sedge has seven ties of range now, right? And that's gonna be extremely powerful. How much? Just how powerful? Well, I'm gonna make sure you guys shall be demonstrated that too, Rolly. Just come and fight me. Hehehe. <laughs> for the mice, the Fiery Republic. So let's try Lightra first. Lightra is extremely interesting. I was very confused about this group when I when I had first seen it in the campaign, and I am still a little bit. Uh, not comfortable using it, but I understand how it works. So, we're gonna come over here and we can click twice. So if I would click here, then it would happen. Um, the way it works is that where we click, that's the direction the flow is gonna go into, right, essentially. So if I do something like this, then these two units will essentially Time switch place. Improvise. While the enemy unit also taking 35% commander damage. Yep, 35% commander damage. Now let's try a different variation, because there's many variations you can do, it's a very interesting groove. Uh, you can come over here, and now let's say I want to do this instead. Coming at you I click top and right. Then boom, yep, then they get switched in a 90 degree position. I mean 180 degree position, not 360. So, in this case, that kills both of them, because there's, you know, holes here, so be careful, you don't, you don't really want that. But let's give an example where uh, maybe on this side there is no hole, only, I mean only here. What then? Well, then the direction really matters. Let's say I wanna do this. Time to then improvise. the ranger leaves, but my unit dies. Wrong use of the groove, my friend. 
In that case, what we should do is the other way around. We're gonna come over here and we're gonna click this, like that. The right side, not left side. And BAM! Now the ranger dies, but my unit lives. So you guys have to be very careful which unit you click first and which second and in what direction, because that's gonna affect the groove entirely. Very, very interesting groove. I love it. The implications of how you could use this is, is absolutely incredible. Now we also have tier 2. Let's check that one out. Now tier 2 lighter groove. Very interesting. Same thing except now the range is one tile further. But you can still only click twice. Be careful guys. So let's say I wanna uh, swipe this one and this side. Time to improvise. Bam. Now the archers here. And these guys are here. And this guy who was on top is now below. It's a, a bit confusing when you do it like that, but it's symmetrical. You can also see these little dazing effects. This is very powerful, you know why? Well, now all units affected, by the way, um, instead of 35% commander damage, now the groove deals essentially 50% um, commander damage, as you can see. Just like Wolfer's groove and Ragnar's groove and stuff. But now there is an effect applied, not to our units, only to the enemy units. And what that effect is? Well, they cannot essentially... Um, hold up. Yeah, so they essentially cannot attack for a turn. Which is very interesting. They can still move, but no attacking. But they can still load, fortunately. But no attacking, which is wow. Super interesting, huh? Now let's say... I have a situation like that, where there is some water stuff. Well, uh... Coming at you live! Boom! Enemy died, but we are fine. Don't do a full 360 though, because the results may vary. Alright guys, time for pistol. But before we do that, let's take a look at, once again, tier 1 groove of light show. And now there's 4 enemies nearby. Or right, 4 units. 2 friendly, 2 enemy, because we can... Use, I mean, we can move both enemy and friendly units, but only the enemy units take damage. Coming at then you. all of them move. All of them around you, not just the ones you chose, all around you moves in the clockwise or counterclockwise, whatever direction you choose, alright? Let's do a full on 360, guys. Let's try that. Let's dance. Yep, that's what happens. Essentially, you mirror the positioning, which is super interesting. I'm loving Lycha's groove, which is a great percentage too. Uh, let's see. Now let's do this instead. Or let's do this instead. These two. Coming at you live! You guys get it? So it's essentially like a mirroring groove. Oh, Pistil, Deer Manipulator. Alright guys, we have Pistil around here and her groove is the chain reaction. Now you guys can see I have a very interesting line, right, of all kinds of units. Doesn't matter which team they belong to, it can be even my own, the enemy, whatever. Chain reaction knows no mercy. This Let me show you guys. Hurt the entire hmm. time. Aha! Yep, so essentially as long as units are connected, the electricity will travel. However, don't worry guys, it's not OP because as you guys can see, just about from this section on, the damage is like com completely negligible. Like it's 7%, 6%, 9%, 6% and all of these guys. So it's like a set amount of damage. Um, but the first unit which you shock takes the most damage, so 90% for the first one, um, 58 for a second, 43 third, and I believe it slowly scales down. So like the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The first seven units take like decent damage, and then the rest they just take cheap damage if it's connected. So if you're gonna use the chain reaction, it's important to make sure that the that you start the chain reaction at at the most v expensive part of the enemy's army. So, so let me show you guys what I meant. So all of these are connected, right? So no matter where I start, I could start like here for uh, for all we care. They all of them are gonna get damaged eventually, right? The electricity reaches, but it's important where you start because of course, as I said before, where you start, this is the most damage. So in this case, I should not start here. I should start. 
here, of course, that's, that's some desert enemy, enemy units, not my own. I should start here. This will only hurt the entire hmm. time. Aha! See that? So now the damage here is less because it's far away from the point of entrance. And it's quite huge here. So 45% on a golem, 30 on a dragon. So lots of damage here. So make sure that the entry point where of the uh, electricity is at the most expensive part of the enemy's army. Unless, of course, that would put your commander in danger. Now the difference between the tier 1 and tier 2, tier two groups of, uh, of pistol are extremely tiny. 20% uh, so, I mean yeah 20% damage scaling per unit but in this case it's only 10% so let's see how that changes the damage shocking. Hmm. Aha. see that guys much more significant first of all the uh, even the cheap damage is decent damage now it's like 18% on here 15% on a dragon even a cheap damage is kind of huge. Um, it still takes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 units for the most powerful part of the discharge to uh, to finish. But that powerful part of the discharge is even more powerful now because it scales down by 10 HP, not 20. As you guys can see, overall just much more damage in every sense. So, so Romb, the rat amongst mice, except he's a great guy. So... Let me show you guys his groove. Now he has the crystal heart. Ooh, for my little pony. Ha <laughs> ha. Maybe. Maybe. But point is, is the crystal heart and he can use that. So the idea is that these guys are too far away, right, for me to hit. Not at all. One, two, three, four. And now I use the groove. This will not end well for you. <laughs> Bam. And we can move again, guys. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And not just that, that we can move again in the same turn, but also we deal much more damage. You guys see that? I one hit a spearman on a plane style. Let's see how much a buff grooved romb deals to a full head golem, shall we? Choice. Full head golem on planes, of course. So, we don't want hit a ballista, but we completely destroy it. And 65%, guys. Of course, that will put him into crit range, but 65% on a golem. In a 2v2, this would be the perfect percentage so that Sedge could, tier 2 Sedge could come and finish him off. So, very in in interesting uh, 2 versus 2 uh, commanders. Rom plus Sedge. That's just one example of Rom. And it's not just that, guys. Um, he stays in this form until his next turn, which means he takes less damage. So, uh... A night crit on a buff romp is 25%, which is essentially halved. This golem, who, who is almost at full crit, crit HP, 19 damage, um, and he's totally fine. We have a certain percent HP, even though we, get, we just got night crit, we got a golem crit, and the golem retaliation crit. And we have 40% HP. So lots of them, lo lots of damage defense. Now that's not all. Of, we are still at tier 1 groove rise, tier 1 romp. It's not just the fact we can move again, I'm sure you guys saw it before, but it's not just 4 movement, now it's 5 movement, which means I can reach this golem, which means Room essentially has 9 movement range in one turn with this group, which is absolutely insane, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, now we can hit that, and the exact damage increase guys is 1.5 times, which means now Room deals 150% commander damage, and he has plus uh, 1.5 times defense as well. So he takes 50% less damage, in other words. Hmm. Now the tier 2 groove of Romp. Oh, 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 oh my god, you thought this was powerful. Okay, so tier 2 groove, guys. Now, we can work 4 normally and then Crystal Heart tier 2. Strength from beyond. Instead of plus f 5 movement now, in our second form, we have 6 movement. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Which is a knight, guys. Yep, that's a knight rider. That's a knight movement rider for a commander. After he already moved. Isn't that insane? So, uh, beside that, our defense is also insanely good now. It's 1.75 times, which means we only take 25% of the damage we normally would, guys. From retaliations, from attacks, from anything. So we might actually be able to survive if we stepped our commander here. 
Let's just test that, okay? Will we survive four dragon hits and a ballista hit and a witch hex? 10% uh, hit, 10% uh, less, we have no money. The answer is yes! Imagine that, guys. Absolutely monstrous. Four dragon hits survived. Four dragon hits survived. Plus a ballista, plus a witch hex, too. It could have been survived. Now, what about... Something absolutely unheard of. I mean, four dragons was already unheard of, but now I'm in a road. So four dragon crits, guys. Four dragon crits on a commander, huh? Can we survive that? One dragon crit on a commander. Two dragon crits on a commander. Three. Oh my god, four. And we would have been fine with the witch hex too. Now, ja guys, just try to comprehend that for a few seconds, okay? In your brain. A commander on a road. Surrounded by four dragons, a witch, a ballista, and a golem, and a knight crit. And he had his totally fine. He's not even like 1 HP, he's 25 HP, 24 HP. Imagine that. Nothing can kill this guy in one turn if he's full HP. Nothing. And imagine if he goes on like a mountain. Oh my god, we would be like 50 or 60% HP right now. Actually, maybe more than that. So yeah, nothing can one hit romp, and I mean nothing, unless you have like multiple, multiple archers, multiple um, witch hexes, multiple trebuchets, then yeah, I guess you could take him down, but that's extremely rare. Most normal situations, even if the enemy has like four golems, four dragons, whatever, you know, mage crits, doesn't matter, romp in his tier 2 groove will definitely survive. And that's just the defense. Let's take a look at the offense changes for his tier 2 groove. Now, Crystal Heart tier 2, besides being able to move 6 tiles, we also have 2 range. Yep, that's right, we're like a ranger. We can actually attack this dragon right here, even though we can't reach it physically. So if I come here, I can reach it. If I come here, I can't. If I come here, I can. Which means we have 3 range, essentially, not 2. So we are here, 1, 2, 3. See, guys? Or I come here, uh, here, I can attack the dra dragon. No problem. One, two, three. See? So it's extremely interesting, guys. Rom becomes like just a monster. Alright. Time for the final two commanders, guys. Elodie and Dark Mercia. Now, Elodie. Oh, my poor dear Elodie. Well, uh, I'm sorry to say, guys, that she has been nerfed for some reason. Her groove first here is, st is still slow. It does the same thing, it can do it with any unit, water, air, doesn't matter. But, now it only lasts for one turn, guys. Yep, which means I can take this witch. Enter oblivion! <laughs> Mine now. For one turn. But then, bam! Back into the original group, guys. The original team it was, uh, it was taken from. So I can only use it for one turn, the unit, which is weaker than before. And her tier 2, her tier 2 groove is basically what it was before she was nerfed. Like, you can take a unit permanently, guys. That's the only change. Your heart is weak! <laughs> so now, guys, it's a permanent change. Now the dragon is out forever. And this is just like it was in War Group 1, so now the tier 2 LOD groove is what it was in War Group 1. Uh, uh, she's pretty damn weak, I think. Uh, but it's alright, at, at least we have a bit of changes there. It might be interesting in a few situations, although the fact that it's a slow charge, if she was like medium charge, then I guess that would be better, but she's still slow charge just like before. But of course, now it's not just commander actions that charge groups, but any action, so... Maybe, maybe Meta will res resolve, guys. Maybe she's not that bad, as I think she is. All right, time for Dark Mercia. Now, Dark Mercia, the most OP of commanders. <laughs> nah, unfortunately, no. What about her tier 2? Hmm, we'll talk about that in a second. Her tier 1 groove is the same exactly as before in War Groove 1, guys. It's like Sigrid's groove. She uh, steals whatever damage she uh, deals and adds it to herself, so she hears herself while dealing 30 damage to everyone in a 3x3, three three, top, bottom, left, right, diagonal uh, area. So, this is the same as in Magrub 1, essentially. No changes. But, 
Her tier 2 is extremely interesting, I must say. <laughs> but first, let's do a healing test. Okay, so now we have 10 units, all 1 HP, and she's 6 HP. So let's see how the healing works exactly, number-wise, yeah? Requiem power! Yep, we got healed 10 HP, because that's all they had. So, you don't get healed to full just because they kill a unit, nope. It's the exact amount that you uh, steal that you get healed back, guys. So my friends, if you have reached the final commander, so... Hmm, Dark Mercia tier 2. Do you notice anything different? No, because there's no difference. Here, at least. Any units inside the range, still 30%. No changes. But the moment I cast Groove, I think you guys shall notice something. All shall fall while I still stand! Requiem power! Yep. That's right guys, even though none of these were inside the range, it doesn't matter, on the whole entire map, every single enemy unit without exception takes 10% flat damage. That's right, that is extremely, extremely enticing for the Dark Mercia fans, you know? And I love that, Terry and... Mercy Ball were are all team one, same as uh, Dark Mercy, which is why they didn't get damaged, in case you were wondering. Now let's see if it works on structures too, or just walking units. Oh, two so little feet. Or they're not alive. Let's see, we are gonna find out now. Nope, okay, so it doesn't work on structures, which you know makes sense, because they hit anyway. So only units, guys, but that includes commander, guys, so be careful. Your commander now has is permanently witch-hexed. So it once Dark Mercia 2 second tier groove is live, you have to be careful. Your commander from now on has only 90% HP. No matter where the hell he is on the map. He only has your commander only has 90% damage. 90% uh, HP essentially. So there's like a witch on every corner of the map, essentially. That's how you have to play. Which is very threatening. This might be a very interesting late game. But yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I shall see you in the next video. Bye-bye, and have a lovely day. I love you guys. Cheers, yeah?